Hi there, in this lesson we're going to look at National 5 Expressions and Formula Specimen 1, Questions 3 to 7, basically all the algebra questions. Okay, so let's look at this first question here, which is expand and simplify where appropriate, basically multiply out the brackets. So remember here when you've got this, you need to multiply both parts by the m. So let's do that. So you've got m times 8m, so that's kind of like 1 times 8 and m times m, so 8m squared. Take away, um, and I'm going to write fm, you could put mf, I tend to put it in alphabetical order, but absolutely fine for both, both ways. The next one, times everything by the x first. Okay, so I'm going to do the x times the x, and then the x times the 9. So that's going to give me x squared plus 9x. And then I multiply everything by the 2. So the 2 times the x, and the 2 times the 9. I'll put that at the end here. So that's plus 2x plus 18. At this point, you just want to simplify that middle bit. You can see plus 9 plus 2, which makes plus 11. So finish it off like that. Okay, factorising, that's basically doing the opposite, putting it back into brackets, back, writing it back into this format here or this format here. Now, the way this is going to work is the first one is going to be a common factor, then it's going to be a difference of two squares, and then it's going to be a trinomial or quadratic to finish. So the first one is a single bracket, and you can see that y is common to both bits, so we take y out as a common factor, open up your bracket, and you think, well, what do I need to multiply y by to get this? So I need a y at the front to make y squared, I need a takeaway, I need an 11 to make the uh, 11 y at the end. With the difference of two squares, what you're looking for is double brackets, we need p's at the front, or I've got y's in this case, but we'll call it, okay, it doesn't really matter, we'll call it y's. Um, y's at the front of your brackets, or p's probably is better, because it's p's up there. And because you've got 81 here, I would put a 9 and a 9. And the signs need to be different. You can have a takeaway and a plus, or a plus and a takeaway. And the reason for that is because, it should really be p's here, but y times y makes y squared. You've got a plus 9y and a takeaway 9y, which will cancel the middle bit. And then 9 9s are 81, but because you've got negative, it'll be negative 81. But yeah, I've put y's here, but you can treat it as p if you like. Right, for the last one, what you need to do is, um, again, it's double brackets, but you tend to focus on the 21 at the end. So um, we'll put y and y at the start of our brackets. There, like that. And the numbers at the end need to multiply to make 21. They must. They must multiply to make 21. Now, if you're thinking about things to multiply to make 21, you can either have 1 times 21, or you could have 3 times 7. Now, because of this part here, when you times the brackets out, uh, these bits that multiply to make this must add together to make this bit in the middle. That's what, from this bit here, they can add. See how the 9 and the 2 make the 11? Well, the 3 and the 7 here are going to make the 10. The 21 and the 1 would make 22, and there's no 22s there. So we need the 7 and the 3. And you can test it out. If you're good at multiplying out, test it out and see how it works. Right, question 5, uh, completed square form. So basically we have to write it with a bracket and a squared and then a plus or minus at the end. Now the way to get the part in the bracket, and again I'm only going to do one example here. If you find these tricky, go back and look at the video lessons on actually completing the square. But you half this bit here to get the bit in the bracket, this bit at the start here. So we're going to half that and get x plus 2 squared. Now what's going to happen there, if I was to multiply this bracket out, this here, I'm going to get x squared, I'm going to get a plus 2x, another plus 2x, which is going to make the 4x in the middle, but it's going to make a plus 4 at the end. And you can try it yourself if you, if you did x plus 2 bracket times x plus 2 bracket. So it's going to create a plus 4. There's no plus 4 over here, so we want to take that away. And then put in your plus 3. So that's the kind of extra bit that's created, and you want to take it off, because it's created by multiplying that out. To finish off, you just fix that wee bit at the end. Negative 4 add 3, that's negative 1. Right, um, question 6. I would write the bottom bit out slightly differently, because it's x minus 3 squared. Kind of like what I was talking about there, that's x plus 2 squared, but you could rewrite it as x plus 2 times x plus 2. This bit at the bottom, I'm going to write x minus 3, x minus 3, because there's a squared there. Now it says write this in its simplest form. Well, watch what I can do now. Because it's 
been multiplied by the same thing top and bottom, I can divide by those two things. So when you score out, you're really dividing. So I get rid of that there, because I divide by it, because it's been multiplied, and I get rid of that there, and it leaves me with this. 4x minus 5, x minus 3. If you're at all worried about this bit here at the side, basically that's saying x can't equal 3. In maths, there's certain things you can't do. You can't square out a negative number, and you can't divide by 0. And if you pop the 3 in here, and like in there, you would create 3 take away 3, which is 0 in the bottom of a fraction, which is impossible. It's really just additional information. You don't have to bother about it. And if it confuses you, just ignore it. But that's what really is happening there. I think it will do the same down here. Yeah, it does. See how it says x and y can't be 0? It's because they're on the bottom. You can't mathematically divide by 0. And it says here d can't be 0. That's because d is in the bottom. Anyway. Right. Let's try and take away these fractions. So the first thing you need to do is get a common denominator. So the common denominator is uh, certainly here got by multiplying the two things. So x, y. I'll make my rubber a wee bit smaller there, actually. <coughs> so x, y in the bottom, x, y in the bottom. Now, how did we get this to x, y, this bit here? You times by y, so do the same to the top, so that'll be 10y. You times this side by x, do the same to the top, so that's going to be 3x. And you can just now combine it all over the same denominator. Just write 10y, take 3x over xy. Right, last one. Uh, when you're dividing fractions, you flip the second one and multiply. So the first one stays the same. You can see I've got a multiply here, but the d is going to the top and the k is going to the bottom. And then just do m times d, md, and 8 times k, 8k. And that concludes all the algebra and the specimen one.